So, uh, my name is Dr. Mulacheri Ajit Shankadas. I'm the director of cardiology at the Madras Medical Mission at Chennai. Well, uh, we know that there are two causes of most diseases. One is clear genetic disorders and one is clear environmental disorders. Now, say in the cardiac segment, we know that certain chromosomal disorders, which are pure genes, like say Down syndrome, creates holes in the heart like ventricular septal defect and atrial septal defect. And we know that pure environmental disorders can create uh, illnesses in the body, which uh, like co common is occupational therapy, uh, th uh, illnesses due to occupational disorders, like say asbestosis or smoking related lung issues. They are clearly the environment which is causing the problem. But most of the disorders don't form in either spectrum. They are in a mix of both of these. And this is called as either polygenetic disorders or genetics predisposes and the environmental acts on it. And the specific term for this is epigenetics. Most of the disorders that you see of lifestyle, like hypertension, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, is forms this group. So we can diagnose a simple gene disorders which are either single gene or single chromosomal disorders. Very simply, a chromosomal disorder can be diagnosed by a simple karyotyping in fish, while a gene disorder which can be easily uh, diagnosed, uh, for example, there are specific genes for what we call as the long QT syndrome, which is an electrophysiological problem where children or adults die suddenly because of a heart rhythm disturbance. There are disorders of muscle called as cardiomyopathies where we know clearly there are some autosomal dominant genes which cause the myosin fragments to become abnormal and create disorders and sudden death. So they, these are straightforward, clear-cut, single-gene disorders which most of us know about. Any patient who walks in with this problem are sent for these tests. But the bigger problem seems to be the polygenetic disorders where, or epigenetic disorders where there are multiple genes for the same uh, influence of the environment, which is more complicated. And we clearly don't have Indian data uh, on these uh, genetic disorders. Most of the data comes from the European and the American, what we call as GVA studies or the whole genome sequencing studies, where we have some data. But is it applicable to Indian population? I'm not so sure unless we have the data from Indian population study. And that is one of the aims of these collaborations. Well, I think personalized medicine is very important and we know it again and again. Suppose there are two people with blood pressure. If I give them a blood pressure medicine, uh, you find the response to both of them different. The same way I give a cholesterol lowering medicine to two people, the number to which the cholesterol comes down with the same dose of medicine is different. More importantly, some of the serious side effects because of medicines are related to uh, the, the, your genes. We know, for example, a blood thinner, clopidogrel, we know that there is a lot of resistance because of some genetic uh, issues in Indian population which makes the drug clopidogrel not effective in Indian population. So if I know that this patient is resistant to this drug, then instead of giving that drug, I can switch to another drug. So that is how it helps in personalizing medicine. Well, yes, uh, some studies, in, in fact, we ourselves have been involved with certain large genetic studies uh, with various groups, including uh, IIT Madras, uh, Rajiv Gandhi Center of Biotechnology, and we've just started our research work with MedGenome now. There are other uh, units also doing, but a concerted global effort, and I mean global, it means millions of patients, uh, data to be put together in various centers in India, Europe, and US, is now being coordinated. And this is one of the areas where we are now working with MedGenome and other hospitals in India, along with European collaborators to put this database together. Well, uh, no, no center in any disorder is complete uh, without having a cardiovascular uh, unit with genetics and with an uh, area for counseling of patients. So it's okay to treat one patient who walks into your hospital with a disease. But the more important issue is can I prevent the disease either in his siblings, in his children, or his, in his family by either predicting that this will happen to them at what frequency 
and how to prevent it by acting on it, whether it be by changing your lifestyle or by using medicines to prevent it. So I think that it's very important that we physicians switch gear a bit and start not only acting on that patient but acting on the whole population around it so that we can prevent the same problem from occurring again. We know very clearly, say like a congenital disorder, uh, if two siblings have the same disorder, then the third sibling is very likely that the third child is going to get the disorder. So we need to counsel the parents about it, that this is going to happen the hole in the heart if you have two siblings with it, it's going to happen to the third child, so be ready for it. There are some serious disorders which can, you know, create problems for the child. So if we can check this uh, either prenatally, by in utero testing, we can do it. Uh, we can predict that this would be happening to the patient and some serious disorders we can prevent it uh, by counseling and taking therapeutic steps in the same way. Let me tell you this has evolved. Uh, say 20 years ago, doing a whole genome sequencing was extremely expensive. It would be 100,000 Indian rupees to do a one genome sequencing. Uh, today, you can get this done at uh, 10,000 rupees or lower. And it's going to just come down because things have become standardized, the tests are very simple to do. But the problem is not doing the test, it's the interpretation of the result. It's like the uh, information on the IT network. All the information is available, but what do you look for is the issue. Now, we with our preliminary work on hypertension have realized that the genes which are causing hypertension in European population don't seem to be the genes creating the problem in hypertensive in India and diabetes. At least in a couple of genes we have found that. So we need to look specifically for those genes which are not available on the European GVAS studies. So if we find that, then we know clearly that these personnel who have these uh, what we call as single nucleotide polymorphisms of these genes are predisposed to that disorder. And we can counsel them that, see, you have genetically a predisposition, so you better act very early, say start in your early teens to stop sugar, cholesterol, a lifestyle, and don't wait for the 40 to 50 when the disease has already happened to now do something to prevent it. So I think that this will help us to counsel and get patients right. So the genomics industry in one way has evolved that now this testing is available at reasonable prices even in this country. So it is accessible for many people. Now this, the way we need to evolve as physicians, uh, as scientists is to use the test judiciously. Because if you do just a study you know, randomly in everybody, you are not going to find any answers but maybe there will be more confusion. So we need to find who the patient is right for this study, use that study to counsel the patients and to use that study to interact with their collaborators over the worldwide because this is a global world. Indians don't live only in India. Indians live in the UK, Indians live in the US. So whatever is applicable to the Indian community in India is applicable to the Indian community in the UK or US. So we can tell them, see, this is different in India, in Indian patients as compared to European patients. But since this Indian is living in UK, he needs to watch for this genetic disorder. So, so I think this is very, very important. For say in Glasgow, 2.3% of the patient population are Indians. So we need to tell them that 2.3% that these are your genes, not what is the Caucasian genes, which we should look for. So the genetic industry is moving globally in the right direction overall. But the answers need much more work. And unfortunately, in genetic disorders, you can't make get answers with few thousand patients. You need few million patients to get an answer. So there is no way a single center or two centers will be able to produce an answer. So we need a multi-center collaborative research, which is what we are doing with the British Heart Foundation and the University of Glasgow and trying to get multiple partners together to get these answers.